not with the blood of goats and calves, but with his own blood. He entered the most holy place once for all, having obtained eternal redemption. I can just imagine this. That Jesus, after he rose up from the grave, Mary was about to touch him. He said, don't touch me. I've got one more stop to make. I've got to carry my blood. You don't ask me who collected the blood. That's not the issue. The issue is, Hebrews 9, 12. And try to imagine this with me. In the grand stands of heaven, in the glory of the spiritual realm, but God the Father is seated and the angels are watching what is happening. They saw the eternal word become a man. They saw him crucified. They saw his blood shed. And here on this morning, he is walking into the heavenly tabernacle, carrying his own blood to offer it before the altar of God in heaven. And that blood was not the blood of bulls and goats. That was not the blood of some bird, some animal. It was the blood of God who had clothed himself with flesh and blood, with humanity. It was the blood of the sinless, spotless son of God. It was the blood of the only, only begotten, the firstborn of the father. It was the blood of the one who had triumphed over sin, over Satan, over death. It was the blood of the only sacrifice that could prevail. And he took this blood and he walked into the heavenly tabernacle. And he placed it on the mercy seat before God. And that moment, eternal redemption was offered to you and me. This blood doesn't just cover sin. This blood cleanses sin. This blood doesn't leave you in a state of sin consciousness. This blood gives you the righteousness of God. This blood doesn't leave you in subjection to sin, Satan, and death. This blood redeems you and brings you out of the power of sin, out of the power of Satan, out of the power of death, and makes you a son and a daughter of God. This is the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. Put your hands together. Give him praise. Give him praise. Give him praise. This blood sealed our complete redemption. The Bible tells us, 1 Peter 1, 18 and 19, knowing that you were not redeemed with corruptible things like silver and gold, because they cannot buy your redemption in any way. But you were purchased, you were redeemed with the precious blood of Christ this blood obtained our redemption this blood this is the power of the blood of Jesus that is why today you and I we don't come to God with the blood of birds and animals we don't come to God with our money. We don't come to God with our piety. We don't come to God with our pilgrimages. We come to God through the blood of Jesus Christ. That's the only way. That's the only way. The power, understand the power of the blood of Jesus. It's because of the blood of Jesus, our debt, debt of sin has been wiped away. It's because of the blood of Jesus, the power of sin has been broken. It's 
because of the blood of Jesus, Satan no longer has any right over us. It's because of the blood of Jesus that we are redeemed unto God. We belong to God. It is because of the blood of Jesus that we are in a covenant relationship with God. It's because of the blood of Jesus that we overcome. It's the blood of Jesus Christ. Worship team, please come. So today, you and I, we testify to the blood. What does that mean? Revelation 12 verse 11 says, talking about these people at, at, at a particular point in time, he says, they overcame the devil by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony they overcame the devil by the blood of the lamb there is overcoming power in this blood which the blood of birds and animals could not afford but in this blood you and I overcome the devil's afraid of this blood the devil lies crushed underneath our feet because of the blood, the blood of Jesus. Now, we don't plead the blood. You know, there used to be this old saying, plead the blood. We don't plead the blood. Why? Because what is it to plead the blood? It's a term borrowed from the legal system where a lawyer would plead a case. For be, on, on behalf of the person being accused, he would plead their case by presenting evidence in order to receive their pardon. We don't plead the blood. Why? Because the case was dealt with 2,000 years ago. The case is over. The verdict has been pronounced. Satan is condemned. You are justified. The matter is closed. There is no case, court proceedings against you. So we don't plead the blood. We proclaim the blood. We just say what the blood has done for us. The case is over. I'm not pleading for anything. Devil, I'm telling you. You've lost the case. I'm telling you that I overcome by the blood of the Lamb. I'm not pleading anything but the devil. I'm saying, devil, the blood has cleansed me. Look at me. I'm telling devil, the blood's redeemed me. You can't touch me. I'm proclaiming, you and I, we are proclaiming the blood. We are proclaiming what the blood of the Son of the living God has done for us. And every time we testify to that blood, every time we proclaim the blood, every time we announce what the blood of Jesus has done for us, the Bible says we overcome. We overcome. Amen. There's only one way to have our sins forgiven before God. There's only one way for us to come into a right relationship with God. It's through the blood of Jesus Christ. Thank you for listening. We trust this message was a blessing to you. For more free resources, including sermons, sermon notes and books, please visit apcwo.org. For information on APC Bible College in Bangalore, visit apcbiblecollege.org. Do remember to download the All People's Church Bangalore app from the Apple or Google Play Store.